What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode with Monster Angling. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. And we're back down at the river doing some bottom fishing, some bait fishing. And I know I don't want this uh, bait fishing thing to get too repetitive, but hey, I like I like targeting these bottom feeders this time of year. Um, we're actually fishing a different spot today, a little bit farther down the shore from where I usually fish. So maybe, uh, maybe it'll pan out, uh, but uh, we plan on, if the fishing isn't awesome here, we probably might go back to our spot that we've been having pretty good success at, but hey, it's always good trying some new spots out of your comfort zone. We, uh, we built up some, uh, some more uh, sturgeon pickerel rigs, I guess you could call them. They're basically pickerel rigs beefed up. Um, if you ever hook into a sturgeon, you don't have to worry about snapping them off. They're good just because there's so many rocks in here, so many little places to get snagged. Even if you catch a smaller fish, you can still, you still have that chance at breaking off, right? So, and uh, if you do happen to hook into a big fish, which that happens pretty regularly at the spot, you don't have to worry and stress so much about breaking that uh, little pickerel rig um, because usually the ones you buy at the store are made with pretty cheap line, pretty light lines. So I'm out here with my dad, if I haven't mentioned that already, um, just me and him this evening, but we're gonna stay into the dark here and uh, hopefully get some more uh, river monsters. So but anyway, guys, I am gonna go back over. I actually just came up here to do my intro. We're both, we're fishing over there. So I'm gonna go put the big camera away for now, put you guys on chest camera and then uh, I'll either see you guys on showing you guys something or uh, on the first fish. So uh, let's go. Got one. It's a sturgeon. Is it? Yeah, that's a sturgeon tail. I don't know how, I don't think it's a huge one, but uh, first fish of the day. I set my rod up in the water here just to kind of get away from the shore a little bit. Just because uh, um, it's a pretty kind of a gradual drop, so. I kind of want to get away from the rocks a little bit just so I don't get snagged or anything. It's not a big, big, big one, but hey, it is a uh, a sturgeon, and uh, we'll get you, give you guys a look here, and then we'll send this guy right back. He's not terrible, um, but I'm just gonna put this in the rod holder here. You know, he's really not. He's a fighter. He's really not too bad, actually. This is a feisty fish. Here, I'll give you guys a quick look here. I'll hold him like this. There he is. First, uh, first sturgeon of the day. Hopefully we get a bigger one this evening, but hey, that's a freaking awesome start. So uh, we'll get a release on this guy, I guess. Okay, we're just gonna tuck him back right here in this deep patch. He will go easily. He, uh, he put up a lot of, a lot of fight. There he goes. Awesome fight. And uh, I'm just glad he didn't get snagged out there. It's pretty shallow, but uh, hopefully we get some more fish tonight. But that is an awesome, awesome start. Got him. Uh-oh. He's stuck. Got him. Another little baby sturgeon. This is, a, this is a small one. These are the sharpest little fish ever. These ones are so sharp. This guy freaking chowed it too. But guys, if you didn't see me there, I didn't, wasn't talking a lot. He actually got, uh, 
got snagged out there on a rock or something. So I kind of let him let him get himself out there a little bit. Might need the pliers on this one actually. Really rubbery mouths on these fellas. But I'm just gonna leave the pliers right there. And I'll show you guys on GoPro quick and then I'm gonna show you guys also on big camera. There he is guys. Nice little sturgeon. It's a lot smaller than the first one we caught, but I'm glad I got this one in. He did get snagged out there, but hey, I uh, still landed him and we're gonna get a release on this guy right now. Come on. Oh, look at that. Oh, come on. You could see his crew is around the top of the water there. That's awesome. We were just talking about moving. The sun just hit the horizon, but I think we're gonna give it a little bit longer here now. And, uh, do you have a lesson if somebody uh, gets snagged like that again? Yeah, so what I did is I reeled it in pretty, pretty slow off the start, but I kind of, I reeled up to the tension and then I walked kind of down the shore because I knew he, the way he got snagged, I didn't get snagged too hard. So I knew if he, that fish could probably pull himself out. So I kind of changed my angle a little bit and kind of just pulled, just gave it enough tension and then he swam out of the snag and, uh, got the fish in. So it all worked out pretty good. Got one. Got one, guys. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty, yeah, that's a big fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a big fish. We got ourselves a line screamer here. I think he just realized he's hooked. <laughs> that is a big run. Oh my goodness. I'm not gonna get overexcited, but this could be, could be big. How big do you think he was? It's really hard to tell, but he feels big now. Like, he, I don't know if he didn't realize he was hooked earlier or what, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. This is weird. But you saw the jump though. I hope I got that on camera. That was pretty cool. I love when these big stirs do that, but I'm just gonna take it nice and easy. We're gonna be nice and quick with this guy though. Um, I really like to encourage a quick release with these big sturgeon. You just wanna minimize the time out of the water. That's the biggest, biggest thing. But he is right here. Oh, this is fun. Can't get over the power of these fish. That Look at the freaking power of these fish, guys. That is so crazy. I can't believe that. Like freaking, this is a big fish. Wow, that is a good run. Ridiculous. Like, I can't believe that. Did... Now I'm gonna put a bit more pressure on them. I got my uh, homemade pickerel rig set up here on right now. And uh, hey, it's, uh, I feel a lot more confident with this thing on than I do if I just had a normal pickerel rig. Pickerel rigs are really, really good at catching fish. Um, uh, they are really good at catching fish. So the best thing you can do is if you're catching these big fish is to uh, beef them up a bit because then you don't have to worry about when you're catching them about breaking off. Because I got 40 pound mayline on here, 40 pound braid. And I also got 40 pound mono on the uh, sturgeon rig, so or on the pickle rig, so. How big is this fish? How's my drag? Uh, I'm gonna back off a little bit. This might be another 50. Yeah. That's a big fish. Holy stick, eh? Yeah. Not the same one I caught the other day. Yeah, just keep filming. 
I wish I had a big camera. But hey. Okay, we're gonna get him turned around here. Bring him upstream and then. Okay, we got him. Pop the hook out here in the water. Just want to keep this fish kind of in the water here. He was he wasn't very hooked hooked very well though, but solid. solid fish. If you're measuring to the tip of the tail, he is 48. If you're measuring to the split, he's 46. So another good fish. Yeah, there he is. Good job, buddy. Nice uh, fish. How's the lighting on there? Really good. Okay, awesome fish. But well, we're gonna just keep this guy in here and. Pull his head in, and he's he's gonna kick off fast. There he goes. Waves goodbye. Awesome fish. That was a bit smaller than the one I caught the other day, but uh, still a beauty. And it's good we kept that fish close to the water, like I like to say, uh, just so it goes back healthy. And now people have a chance of catching that fish again someday. So awesome. But we're. Uh, we're gonna throw this guy back out here and then I will keep you guys updated uh, if we catch anything else here. So I was just out there decently far and uh, awesome. Well guys, that was a pretty freaking good day. Good night out on the water. I'm sorry if that video was a little bit chaotic. Uh, we went out the one day, caught a couple fish. It wasn't awesome fishing. Um, so we actually went back out a couple days later, fished that whole evening, nothing really happened. My dad caught a sturgeon uh, that wasn't in the video and then uh, basically nothing really happened. We moved spots and uh, caught that uh, giant. So in this portion of the video, I'm not gonna keep this any longer than it has to be. Uh, I'm gonna kinda show you guys how I build my sturgeon pickerel rigs. Now, they are just pickerel rigs like I stated in the intro, but you can pretty much do this for any species. This is basically just kind of modifying your pickerel rig to the species that you're going after. The pickerel rigs that come in the packaging aren't necessarily very strong rigs. They're made with pretty light line, um, pretty basic cheap swivels. And if you take all the parts basically off of the line and rebuild it, it will be a lot stronger and potentially save you from breaking off a trophy fish. Let's get started right now. So guys, I have a pack of Cabela's pickerel rigs. Obviously I used quite a few of these already. I bought the bulk pack. So this is your standard pickerel rig. As you guys can see, nothing fancy. They're cheap. Um, it is very easy to get your hands on and they are awesome for catching fish. So I'm just gonna get this all untangled. Well, what did I do? Okay, so there it is. So it comes with the two bars, the four beads, the swivel, and the barrel swivel that you connect your line to. We're gonna cut the, the swivel off that you connect your weight to because that is something that I always like to replace. So first of all, we're just gonna snap that off. We're gonna get rid of that because that's not gonna be any help to us. I'm gonna take these beads from the rig and I'm gonna slide them off. So as you can see, I moved it a little bit there, but I'm just gonna slide it right off the end. And um, basically, I'm gonna keep this, this bead. Don't get me wrong, it's still gonna be useful, but we don't need that right now. So basically, we'll slide the bar off because we'll need that too. So we're gonna have two of these by the end of this. Take that off, slide your other bead off uh, right here. So now we got two beads. There's number three. There's our second metal bar. And there is bead number four. So basically this is what you're left with, just the hunk of line that these pickle rigs come with. It's actually pretty um, thick stuff, but it's not very good stuff. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna trash that. For the rigs I made for the sturgeon, I built with 40 pound mono. Now that is very tough stuff to deal with. So just for the sake of easiness, we're gonna use 20 pound fluoro shield line. Um, I run this on my bait casting rods uh, for throwing you know, bigger uh, swim bait for pike. But just like I said, just for the sake of the video, we're gonna use this stuff just cause it's a little bit easier to handle. So you wanna measure out your line. We're gonna do about that much, two and a half feet 
maybe three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie our swivel on here first, just to have it on there. Um, you can do it later, but I like to do it right off the start. And basically now you have your line and you have your barrel swivel. And now we're kind of gonna build this rig back together again. So first of all, you gotta put your bead on. Now these beads are really, really small. So they're gonna be hard to show you guys, but there it is right there. And we're gonna fish the line through the hole, first of all. But what you wanna do is take your line and actually go back through the bead. So now your bead is cinched on your line. It's not gonna be coming off. Um, and then we're gonna slide the bar back on. You, you guys get the point. Now we're just rebuilding this pickle rig back on the line again. So there's the second bar on there. And then we're gonna put the last bead on. You guys get the drill. And now basically you got your beefed up lined pickerel rig. This is a swivel I actually cut off earlier and I said we were done with. So we're gonna replace that with a stronger um, snap swivel. And now you basically built exactly what we started with. They actually used the snell knot on these, um, on these hooks, which is also an awesome knot. There's a lot of videos out there um, of people tying the snell knot, so I'm not gonna go too in depth with that but you can actually buy pre-made snells, which we use um, just on the fly. I just keep a couple in my terminal tackle box um, that I just you know quickly put on there. But just for the sake of the video, we're just gonna use the ones that came with the rig. If this is a real life situation, I'd definitely be swapping them out. So I would, if you guys are building this kind of while you're watching the video, I'd probably swap them out as well. It doesn't make sense to build the whole thing with beefed up line and then still have this weak line go into your hooks. You might as well beef it all up. So we're gonna fish that through like that. We're gonna come around, put it through the loop again, and then we're gonna pull that tight. I'll do the other one here too. And now you got a beefed up pickerel rig and Honestly, guys, I've caught so many big fish on the pre-made pickle rigs that just come in the package, you put them on, and you go. But this just gives you a little bit more comfort if you're fishing in a rocky area, if you're fishing in a place with a lot of structure, um, if you're targeting specifically monster fish. Um, this just gives you a bit more reliability that it's not going to snap off. Obviously, pickle rigs do still snag lots while you're reeling these things in that weight is gonna be dragging across the bottom. So that is still still a problem. You still are gonna break these off. That is in, inevitable. Um, that It's gonna happen no matter what. But when you beef up your line, you have a lot better of a chance at keeping that rig. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I will do a couple videos. I wanna do kind of a comparison between more of a catfish rig or a, a, just a bottom rig and a pickle rig and kind of show you guys the differences, um, we'll do kind of a comparison, see which catches more fish, go a bit more in depth of why uh, one might work a little bit better than the other and what situations. But anyway, guys, I hope I could help you out in this little portion of the video. I didn't want to keep this too long because I know you guys, some people like the long videos, some people like the short videos, but I kind of like to keep them you know, in that 15 minute range-ish. So please hit that subscribe button. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and we'll catch you guys on the next fishing adventure. Let's go!